bring it up, but you know what? FP, I miss you even more after the takes Shasky's delivering today on the morning roast. FP Santangelo, senior, not junior. We'll never have junior on this show. Only senior. No, I'm kidding. I love junior too. Uh, shout out to junior, but well, FP uh, senior as well, Lucas Alexander brings Shasky Lucas more burritos here. Lucas used to work here. at like a, FP. At a restaurant. Hey, hold, on, let me, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me get FP on. Oh my FP, God. why are you going to do my guy like that? Just don't be jealous FP, of FP. FP, my bad. Don't be jealous of the work FP and I did for a week and a half. I FP. was very jealous. Are you awake, FP? You Somebody out there? Somebody's sleeping in my bed. Dude, I just listened to that whole thing and gained five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame us for the five pounds. Blame Scottsdale, Arizona, FP. Yeah, seriously, bro. I'm surprised you made it to the yard. Dude, I'm surprised I made it back alive. <laughs> 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 Can we oh, my God. Let's start right here. Meets Miami meets, it's, it's crazy right now. Uh -oh. I mean. It was fun. I had a, I had a nice little five day trip down there. It was great. You deserved it. You deserved it, and you deserve some rest. But uh, tell us about the Giants, man. I mean, I don't. What what should we do? Let's start with Marco Luciano. Who is Marco Luciano for Giants fans that were that had their hopes up for this prospect to take an opening day job and be a centerpiece of this organization for the foreseeable future? Who is Marco Luciano? What is he doing right now in Scottsdale, Arizona? Well, a 22-year-old kid, first of all, uh, and he just needs to play. He needs reps. I mean, we talk about his minor league career, and he's been injured, and um, everybody's been waiting for him. I mean, he's 22, so he's got to go play. He needs 450 bat-bats somewhere, and he needs to get the reps uh, defensively at shortstop. And, you know, you, you learn by playing. You learn, like, you know, th that internal clock, when to get rid of it based on the speed of the runner, how hard the balls hit, where to line up for relays. All these things that when you play a lot of games in the minor leagues just become second nature to you. So the big leagues is a tough place to learn. It, it is. Uh, you know, you're, you're on TV every night. There's 40,000 people. Wins and losses mean everything. Uh, when you have a team that's trying to compete this year, I, I don't know if that's the place to learn. So for me, and I'm not the GM or the president of baseball operations, this guy just needs to play and learn all these little things about the position, learn all these little things that, that a 22 year old should learn. Um, and so, you know, right now the, there's, there's a lot of potential there, but then say he does get 450 at bats and he does play a bunch of games at shortstop. Then as an organization, you really know, do you, do you move him off the position and do you make him a left fielder or an outfielder and just let him go swing as hard as he can and play and, and, and relax and play a less, I guess, important position and concentrate on hitting. So, for me, he just needs to play. It's not, is he ready? Is he not ready? Is he good? Is he a bust? Is he a phenom? He's just got to play. Yeah. And I, I don't know where he's going to play. That's not my job, but he's got to play. Well, the fact that you're even suggesting other positions to me is, <laughs> I view shortstop, catcher, center field. You want to be strong up the middle. Everyone knows that, right? But you, you're the quarterback out there on, on many levels, and the whole team's defense takes its cues from that shortstop. There's a way, there's an aura, how you hold yourself out on that diamond. If you're 22, you know, like this is the modern MLB where you're seeing 19 and 20 year olds come up and show they got that swagger. Like, that's a red flag, FB. I'm worried. Like, I'm, I'm now worried about, at least as him as a shortstop. Yeah, I mean... I, I... It is. It's, it is. A, I mean, it, I know the position well. It's, it's a position that you are the quarterback and you are the leader. Um, and you have to take charge and you kind of tell everybody where they have to be on every play. And, you know, you run the bunt defenses. You run the first and third defenses. You know, you're telling the pitcher it's me and you on a comeback mm -hmm. or, or you got the second baseman. There's just so many little things that go into that position. So, yeah, I'm not saying he doesn't have those things. I, I don't know well enough. I, I think it's okay every once in a while if we say I don't know and mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if he has that or not. I haven't been around okay. the team enough to know if he has that or not. But, um, I mean, you watch him swing. He's big, you guys. Like, he, 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 he's a grown man. It, his shoulders are broad. I mean, he, he almost looks like kind of like a Cespedes playing shortstop. If you, I mean, he's big. Really? Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he can run. He's having a tough spring, but I don't, I don't go by the numbers. Like, I'm not saying, oh, he's one for 20 with 11 strikeouts or whatever he is. I go by like how they're carrying themselves. Does he look the position? Does he fit the part? Um, how's he interacting with teammates in the clubhouse? Is, is he freaking out because he's one for 20 or is he still confident? There's so many different things that go into, go into making a major league club. But I'll tell you this, if, if he does make the team, he's got to be the shortstop. It can't be like Nick Ahmed plays three days a week and he plays 
three 100%. days a week, and he's got to play. So that that's my point here. I I don't know where he's going to play, but he's got to play. But but I I feel the same way about Luis Matos because I'm looking at this outfield. It's like I love the Jung Hu Lee signing. I I hope it ends up being a fruitful one for them. And it's just. When I see that Conforto wants a more of a role this year and Yaz wants more of a role this year, I'm thinking, well, like, where where does Matos fit into all this? Like, he's a guy I think needs to play every day. I don't even know what to make of him. He had, his numbers look good in spring, but like you know outfield FP better than anybody. I thought he was a poor center fielder in terms of angles and jumps and just the basics, hitting the cut. You know, like I don't know where does he fit in in all this? Because that's another guy that I think needs to play every day. First of all, I just got an update on my Apple Watch, and it's got my quotes already on our Twitter feed. Is there, is there like a 95-7 stenographer taking notes right yeah. now? Sam His name is Sam Lubman. Yeah, His name is Sam Lubman. It's the only thing he does on the show. Well, if you hear, <laughs> the only so time good. I hear from him is when he tweets so something mean. wrong yeah. and when he tells me to break, which we never break on time. So there you go. <laughs> hey, you guys, here's the thing, like, Matos was like warning track power guy last year and, and you could see the potential and he's gotten bigger and stronger in his, in his build is I was with him in the clubhouse the other day. Like he's put together now, like he's his lower half has grown and the ball's jumping off his back. Like literally like he, he was what him and David VR were the two most impressive guys I saw in five days. It's a small sample size. So what do I know? But uh, the ball's coming off his bat and there's going to be no more warning track power with this guy. And the Giants, have, they said all last year, like, he's just got to grow into his body and they see the potential there for the power. And I'm seeing that right now. So I don't know where he fits in with, you know, with Slater, Yastrzemski, Conforto, and, and Lee. I, I don't know where he fits in. And the other guy that really stood out is, is Fitzgerald. Tyler. So, I mean, yeah, like, he's... In he's, the outfield he's, or, or in the infield? He, I'm sorry. He's, he's Chris Taylor. He's Chris oh, Taylor. Like, okay. he's got Chris Taylor vibes wherever you put him. Shortstop, second base, center field. He runs. He's 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 a thoroughbred. He looks. He's tall. He, I mean, he's just got the build. Um, he's got to be on the team for me. But like like I said, I don't make these decisions. But he he gives Bob Melvin a lot of flexibility, um, and you can plug him in anywhere. And he's a guy that maybe doesn't have to play every day, but he will eventually grow into an everyday player. A la Chris Taylor. Like this guy reminds me of him a lot. So let me ask you this: We're talking to FP Santangelo, ninety five seven the game insider for all things Giants baseball here. And of course, the king of the bus stop. Uh, it's probably where you're at right now. <laughs> the bus stop. I heard you there when it opens, and you're there when it closes. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stop. Uh, stop, stop. I'll get you in trouble. Uh, how <laughs> if I don't get a job soon, I'll be. Uh, I'll just be on a bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, <laughs> literally, right in front of, right in front of ninety five seventy K. You back in the hey, I'll be here at the bus stop. Give me upstairs to the eighth floor, the tip floor, uh, whatever the hell we are. Um, how would you sell Bob Melvin to fans who are skeptical about him being a, an improvement from last year, just being an improvement for the Giants organization? How would you sell fans on Bob Melvin, FP? I'll just say this a general statement, uh, Monte, is that like it just felt different being there. Uh, it felt different being around the team with Matt Williams and Bob Melvin and Pat Burrell and you know guys that wore the Giants uniform now coaching the Giants. And I watched all the drills, the bunties, and um, with the pitchers and they're doing squeeze defenses and just going over like little things. And I'm not saying the last regime didn't do that. The last regime, when I was in spring training last year, worked really hard too. And it was like a beehive. I feel like they had a million coaches and everybody was doing something every day, but it just got, it's got a more relaxed baseball vibe. And, 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 and what I mean by that is when I say baseball, I think there's going to be more baseball this year for giants fans to watch. And what does that mean? Like they're working on base running, going first to third, um, they're working on bunts and bunt Ds. And I think in general, the game is getting back to that. I talked to a bunch of coaches. I talked to Tony La Russa for a while, play the drop, drop thing. I talked to Tony La Russa for a while. And, and yeah, and there were some coaches for the White Sox. <laughs> hey, like, real quick, it. hold on, hold on, hold on, FP, before you continue. We had Bob Myers on earlier this week. And Spadoni dropped a whoop, whoop on him. And Bob goes, hey, 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 hey. I just said I was at the Super Bowl. I didn't tell you I was suiting with. The fact that Bob Myers knew about that <laughs> drop is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, really, that's really cool. It always locks me up like a three-two changeup. But, uh, <laughs> but like, it's it, 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 the game Thank is you, Nelson back, Cruz. <laughs> the, the, the game is getting back to the, it, it, baseball, and I think we all want that, right? We we're sick of the shifts and hitting the ball over the shift, and guys in a one-two count swinging like it's a three-zero count. Um, there's going to be an emphasis on base running. I saw like the White Sox during batting practice 
they had a, sta- a base running station at third and a base running station at second. And they were working on reads off the live off the bat. I'm like, thank God. And I think the game is getting back to that. And I think Bob Melvin and Matt Williams was running all these drills and um, Mark Hallberg, who's you know, from the, the last coaching regime is just a baseball guy. He's like Ron Wotus Jr. Um, so the, the coaching staff to me and the game itself is getting back to what we all grew up loving. And that's just uh, the game of baseball, hit and run, sitting behind the runner, lead off double, let's hit a ground ball to second, move him to third, the sack flies. And the Giants were doing these things during the game. And I don't know about you guys, but it was real frustrating to me the last couple of years <laughs> watching this team with a leadoff double and with three outs, the leadoff double is still standing on second base. There's, there was no like emphasis on moving runners and getting them in the scoring position with less than two outs at third base. So you're starting to see the little things creep back into the game because no shift, because the bases are closer, because there's an emphasis on speed and athleticism. I think the Diamondbacks kind of led the way in that last year, showing people like, hey, you can get to the World Series by having some really athletic guys that cover a lot of ground that can run. And that's what it used to be back in the day. So I'm excited about this. I, I, I'm kind of a purist. I love base stealing and base running and defense and, and, you know, hitting behind the runners and, you know, not striking out. Now, Jung Hoo Lee is a guy that just put the ball in play. He's got a pretty swing. You guys are going to love this guy. He's a lot bigger than I thought. He's six one two twenty, and he looks every bit of it when he's standing in the batter's box. Wow. So I don't know that, I, I'm not saying I, I don't know what this team is going to be. I'd love to tell you, like, hey, guys, get excited about the Giants. Like, they got a good – I don't know. The, the pitching to me right now is a huge question mark, and so, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to be. It's going to. It's a big mystery to me. I think we're all going to see it together unfold. So you're a little worried about the rotation. Like, I think Shasky is well, too, okay, right? Yeah, Are you worried about the rotation? Because I am. petrified because here's why. Like, you bring an old school – like, I'm thinking the 80s Cardinals. You know, they always ran the bases very well. They were, they were excellent base running team. But they, you have to have pitching. You want to go old school, like pitching, pitching, pitching. And Arizona had the young guy step up with their other two studs, and and they went on a run. When you look at Matt Cain, and you look at Lincecum, and you look at Bumgarner at the beginning of their career, that first full season, getting up to 150 innings is, is ugh. I mean, you, you these, some of these guys never been stretched out that far. And I'm looking at Kyle Harrison, and I'm like, okay, I, Logan Webb's going to go 185, okay? Who else is cracking 120? Like, who else, where are they going to get starting pitching from? Harrison's never been stretched out. Jordan Hicks has never pitched 120 innings in any season. Wisenhunt, like Alex Cobb being ready, I am very, very worried. You need seven, eight different starters to take spots this year. And I, I just, I don't know where they're going to get the innings from. Yeah, I mean, there's some kids in camp. I think the Tristan Beck thing hurts. Um, uh, when he, when, I mean, he's, there's, you got you. For me, they had to. They have to have a couple of long relievers because the only guy you're really guaranteed five or six or seven with is 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 Logan. And then after that, it's going to be kind of a you know how's Hicks going to be? Is he going to is he going to be a guy that gives you six or seven innings? Um, and, and then yeah, Harrison, how is he going to fare? Like I don't know. I mean, I I did the Dodgers game the other day and tied the glass now. FP, FP, we're going to call you right back. The connection is kind of getting choppy here. We'll call you right, right back to finish your thoughts on that uh, when it comes to the Giants here. Um, opening day coming up, and they got the Dodgers, Padres, Padres, Dodgers, Dodgers, Padres, Padres, Dodgers, right off the rip here. I mean, I'm intrigued with this team. I am. I need to see Luciano this year. I just need to, I need to see something. You're going to get Nick on that. I, 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 I mean, I, just, I know I'm going to get him, and I'm – Probably not going to be happy about that. Well, it's going to trigger Giants fans. Because I'm like, well, why are we watching Nick Ahmed instead of Brandon Crawford? Well, that, I mean. I'm just saying. I, I don't if, I don't if, agree if, with that, if, but if you're going to hear that. If Giants fans do that, and I mean, I'm, did you watch Brandon Crawford last year? Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't watch the same Brandon I Crawford. I watched, and it wasn't good. I mean, come on. So the Giants opened up with the Padres, the Dodgers. That's their first seven games on the road. And then they come home for their home opener against the Padres April 5th. Then they take on the Nationals. Then they go down to Tampa Bay, Miami, Arizona, New York, Pittsburgh, Boston, and then Philly. Uh, this first month is going to be stacked, man. Stacked for the Giants. So I think we got FP back. We got him back. Go ahead, FP. Finish up, man. We got a, We got you back, FP. Is that any better? You got to be better? Oh, man. It sounds like they're they're tapping you, buddy. It sounds yeah. like the feds are watching. Probably. I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> probably sitting, probably sitting outside of a window right now. Uh, it, it, I, what I was saying... Um, <laughs> Is, is I, Tyler Glass now for the Dodgers the other day was throw 98. He struck out eight Giants and five and a third, and he didn't get a hit. 
and you're you're just you're just looking how stacked and how Dylan Cease is a Padre. I mean, this is the top division. So um, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, jury. I, I would never come on the air and say like this is a great team. My kids, I was down there for a week, and the Giants are going to shock the world. I don't know that right now. I think it's all kind of weak. All right, FP, we're going to let you go. The connection's uh, leaving us. It's getting uh, worse. It's, it's getting worse and worse. But, FP, it's always good to hear it's from like the you. Starting we're gonna do pitching. This, we'll do this every single week, man. We're going to yeah. do it every single week during the baseball season. Can't wait to have you talking some baseball Thanks, here. FP. Hey, my Baltimore Orioles, FP. Watch out. Jackson Holiday. Yeah. Audi Everybody Rushman. Yeah, the Orioles look the same. They're all twins. They're all like blonde haired, blue eyed kids. That's I true. can't tell them apart. Gunner they are. They're going to have a lot of fun on the road. Oh That's goodness. for sure. Uh, FP, have a, a good weekend, are man. Married. Are they? Give them that last two months that Gunnar <laughs> Henderson got with the Orioles last year. Audi Rushman, who, who we're going to see in yes. the home run derby.